All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the NBA. Man, it feels good to say that. For those of you guys that don't know, we actually started doing picks via the NBA here on the channel. It is my favorite sport to both watch, to bet on. I mean, I'm very, very excited for this NBA season to come back. So welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the NBA. Guys, in today's video, we want to dive into this Celtics and Knicks opening night game. We'll also have a separate video for the Lakers and Timberwolves game as well. So make sure to keep an eye out for that as a separate video. But like I said, in this one, we're diving into the Celtics and Knicks. I'm going to give you my lean on the side. I'll give you my lean on the total. We'll talk about a few player prop spots I'm liking in this game as well. But as always, guys, keep an eye on the pinned comment of this video that is where all of my final plays if you do want to go ahead and fade me all of those plays are in the pinned comment for free in terms of how we did last season I don't even know if I want to show this here because I think I'm going to set some expectations too too high right now but we had an 81 unit profit season last year again I would not expect that. I consider myself way too average of a sports better to be going 81 units up in a season. But hey, we did it. And you know what? There might be a chance. We're saying there's a chance we do it again. We'll at least try. But yeah, 81 units up last year. Uh, hopefully we can do something even remotely close to that this year. I mean, even if it was like a quarter of that, I'd be pretty damn happy. But nonetheless, guys, let's go ahead and dive into this video. Actually, I want to bring something back before we do get into this video. Let's bring back the ride of the day. Hashtag ride of the day. If you guys do not know what that is, it is simple. Just use hashtag ride of the day in the comments. Drop your favorite play, whatever you are rolling with, and it is your favorite for the day. And I'll jump on board with one person's play, and I give you a shout out in the next video, win or loss. If you win, we continue to ride with your play until you lose. So you might get multiple shout outs. If you lose, you still get the shout out that next day. But you got to face it. You got to talk about it. So go ahead and drop the hashtag ride of the days with your favorite plays in the comments. But yeah, without further ado, let's jump into the Celtics and Knicks game. Right now, Celtics five and a half point favorites. The total sitting at 224. Celtics obviously coming off of a championship year. 57 and 25 in terms of a record. Knicks playoff team as well. 47 and 35. They ultimately got bounced by the Pacers in the conference semifinals. And there's been a lot of changes on the Knicks side of things, right? Their new starting lineup, Brunson, Bridges, Hart, Ananobi, and Carl Anthony Towns. Uh, so we do see a way different looking team, obviously, with uh, Bridges and then Carl Anthony Towns being the main pieces there. In terms of the Celtics team, pretty much the same team. Now, uh, Christoph Porzingis is already listed as out on the injury report. Drew Holiday is listed as probable, but he is on the injury report as well, so make sure to keep an eye on that. But as of right now, what we should expect from a starting lineup is Holiday, if he plays, White, Brown, Tatum, and Horford. And again, pretty much the same cast and crew for this Celtics team. So we have one team in the Knicks that has definitely switched up a bunch, and another team here coming off a championship season that did really not switch up much whatsoever. Now, to start, I kind of want to talk about how I think this Carl Anthony Towns and Brunson two-man game will go, or I should just say, in general, the new look Knicks offense, right? I do think it's an upgrade. One thing, and I think Randall has made a really you know good name for himself being a high draft pick, kind of starting off slow and, and then ultimately becoming a star in the league, but Carl Anthony Towns is a different animal. I think he's one, way more talented. Two, he can do a lot more. And three, I think he's going to play with Brunson a lot better. Randall was a guy that, yes, he was a you know undersized big, but made up for it in a lot of ways with strength and, and toughness and whatnot. At least Carl Anthony Towns does have the height to play both the four and the five. Uh, Randall would get the ball, though, and honestly dribble a lot, take up a lot of clock, and try and go get his. I think that we're going to see a lot of action between Towns and Brunson that benefits both of them. So this season, I expect Towns to be able to do uh, wonders for Brunson's sort of assist game, take a lot of pressure off of him, and then all of a sudden, you know, you have Bridges, Hart, and Ananobi around them to, to make up for what anyone lacks defensively as well. And speaking of defense, I think that this Towns spot especially uh Robinson healthy and, and Achua healthy when those happen when those two things happen this is going to be a team that I don't think you know misses much of Randall's defensive you know whether it was his intensity or just his de defensive skill I think Towns uh can can make up some of that ground so overall I do kind of approve and think it was a really good move to go out there and get Carl Anthony Towns they you know to him and Tibbs did uh you know cross paths in Minnesota so I'm curious to see and I there was always rumors that they didn't like each other or that um, especially when Jimmy Butler was there right but now all of a sudden he goes out and you know he had somewhat of a say in getting him so uh, we'll see how that works out but overall yes I do think it makes the Knicks better that being said 
I'm still going to lean towards the Celtics minus the five and a half points here. And it's not just because I am a Celtics fan, hence Guy Boston Sports. This is as much of an unbiased pick as, as I can give. Now, keep an eye on the pinned comment to see if we bet it ourselves. There are a few more spots that we might like a little more in this game, right? But keep an eye on that pinned comment. But in terms of the lean minus five and a half, this is still a Celtics team that uh, I do believe is is much better. And I shouldn't say much, but a decent amount better than this Knicks team. They should be able to win both the scoring and I would say... Uh, uh, defensive battle between these two teams. The Celtics team, you know, everyone thinks of Tatum and Brown. No one really gives them much credit for both being decent defenders. Then you have, obviously, Drew Holiday, Derek White, two of the best defensive guards in the entire league, shot blocking guards as well. And then Al Horford. Yes, he's getting up there in age, but he's still a very good defender. And you know, they're the more efficient defense, more efficient offense. The only thing that I could say, they, they're way better from deep, which, uh, from three, which is a huge part of today's NBA. The only thing that I think the Knicks truly have an advantage in uh, would be sort of points in the paint, which, you know, every time they score two, I'll call you with a three or raise you a three type of thing. And also, they're a better rebounding team now. I think that, you know, Hart and Towns and an OB are going to probably be able to out-rebound, I guess you would say, Brown, Tatum, and Horford. But the rebound game isn't always the the sole thing. So if you are saying, hey, well, I think that, you know, uh, the Knicks, the rebound's going to be huge. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they lose that battle. I don't think it's going to make up for six points. But all the good things I said about the Knicks earlier, I can totally see why someone would like to get the Knicks at plus five and a half. But I would probably only take the Knicks if it was like plus seven and a half. Now, I know it's splitting hairs and whatnot, but we don't have much to go off of early on in the year, right? I think the Celtics team's going to be excited. Again, they've played with each other compared to the Knicks where it's a new look Knicks team. Maybe there's going to be a lot of, you know, growing pains and sort of time to mesh and sync. Whereas, like I just mentioned, the Celtics pretty much returning the exact same team. Uh, I think that that gives them a huge leg up. So again, we don't have much data to go off of. As the season progresses, we'll see how some of these things work out. But as of right now, I'm leaning towards the Celtics minus the five and a half points. In terms of the total, it's sitting at 24. Now I have seen, we're recording this the night before, I have seen a few 23 and a halfs out there. So it looks like this thing is moving down and I might jump on it before it does move any more because I don't mind taking a peek at an under here. This thing opened up at, you know, I, I would say when, um, what, a week ago, right, at 222, got up to 223, got up to 223 and a half, up to 224, now back down to 223 and a half. So I'm thinking this potentially could be the peak number to get it at. So if we can jump on a 224, I may do so. You have two, like I mentioned, the Celtics I do think is the better defense, um, more efficient defense, but you have two really good defensive teams overall anyways. I think the Knicks were, uh, in terms of defensive efficiency, you know, a top 12, maybe 11th team last season in terms of opponent points per game. They averaged the fifth fewest compared to the Celtics' third fewest. Like, we have two really good defenses on both sides and two teams that did not play with much of a pace. The Knicks, one of the slower teams. The Celtics, one of the slower teams. Two really good uh, transition defenses as well. Transition defense last year, or at least to end the year, so last month of the season, regular season, Celtics 48% to opponents. The Knicks 53% to opponents, which is kind of just better than average, you know what I mean? But Two good transition defenses, so they're going to try and play slow. And even when they do play fast, you have two decent transition defenses there. I like the under 224. We saw these two teams open up uh, against one another last year, right? That was a 108 to 104 finish, 12 points shy of this number. The last time they played late in the year, the Knicks won that one, their only time they won that season, 118 to 109. So low scoring game, but yes, it did ultimately hit the over, right? Um, but just by a few points. Prior to that, it was a 116 to 102 game in February. February. So I do like the idea of these two teams kind of focusing on defense and kind of getting into the regular season grind here. Like, yes, there's so much firepower on either, either side, but not to sound like a broken record or cliche type thing here, but there's only one ball. Like these teams are going to have to figure out how to, uh, you know, play efficiently and whatnot. So I think they start off a little slow. If this total got down to like 222 and that's, you know, a couple points from here, it's probably not something that I like as much. But like I mentioned, if we're viewing the odds kind of like this, right? And it was 222, 222 and a half, 223, 223 and a half, 224, then 223 and a half. I might want to snipe that 224 where it is. So I'm going to lean towards the under in this spot as well. And I have a few player props to come your way, but a couple things beforehand. First off, if you made it this far in the video, go ahead and comment 10 because you're about to make it 10 minutes into the first NBA. A video of the season again still sounds amazing to say second off hit that like button hit that subscribe button and go ahead and check out underdog guys if you have not checked out underdog you're missing out on one of the funnest ways to play in the NBA here and 
you're going to get a LeBron James free pick if you are a new user. And there's more. You're going to get up to $1,000 in a deposit bonus. So go ahead and find that link in the pinned comment and the description, whichever is easier for you. Go sign up for Underdog. Again, you're going to get this LeBron James free square, 0.5 points. I think he hits that night one. And you're going to get up to $1,000 in deposit bonus cash into your account. If you don't know what Underdog is, they have a list of players, all the players in the game, right? You pick more or less based on their set projections. The more you win, the more you get paid out. You just combine two or more into an entry. Go check it out, guys. Promise you'll love it. That link is in the pinned comment. But like I said, let's jump into some player props here. So the first one we're looking at is going to be Jalen Brown over 24 and a half points. Again, guys, these are all leans. These are spots that I like that I think have some value. But if you do want to truly roll with what I'm actually betting myself, or if you want to fade with what I'm betting my, fade what I'm actually betting myself, all the plays are going to be listed for free in the pinned comment. I just talked about the underdog link and whatnot. Those links will be there. And then right underneath it are the plays. But Jalen over 24 and a half points. Now you're looking at this saying, ugh, four of his last 10 games. Last year, he only hit the four, uh, the over in 44% of games. Uh, he did average without Chris. Kristaps Porzingis, a pretty healthy number. And look at this, last year without Kristaps Porzingis, 58% of the time he did hit the over. So I do like this spot. Small forward now, he's, uh, you know, compared to what we saw last year of the Knicks, they're allowing the ninth most points per game to the small forward position. Again, a little bit new look. He's probably going to get a mix of Bridges, OG Ananobi, and Josh Hart. But either way, I still like Jalen to be able to kind of out-athleticize those guys. And for him to go off, out there and drop 25 on the tail of excitement, uh, I don't mind it whatsoever. It's also worth noting we're getting plus 105 over on FanDuel, right? MGM right now minus 105. So I like the idea of him having some plus money behind his name. I will say this is probably out of the three player props we're looking at, the one that I like the least. Um, and we'll be conservative with our plays, maybe starting with half units and whatnot to start the year. But overall, I do still think Jalen could put up a number. I think he'll get a decent amount of shots up, especially with Porzingis out. Moving on to another Celtic player, and this one's kind of relying on, I guess you could say, Porzingis being out as well. Peyton Pritchard, over one and a half, three pointers made. Get that for minus 120 over on FanDuel right now. In terms of his last 10 games, he only hit in three kind of going off the season in the finals and whatnot, barely doing it, right? But if we look at last year, first off, we go to his home games. Okay, 58% of his home games, he hit it. That's good to see, right? And then we say, okay, well, 58% of his home games, what about without Kristaps Porzingis? 74% of his games. And now Peyton Pritchard, who should play a decent amount of minutes, right? If we, if we uh, filter down here, get rid of all those filters, we say, okay, well, he played 21 minutes per game. What did he do last year? Okay, so if he played at least 20 minutes, he hit the he hit this over in 66% of games. What about home games when he played 20 minutes or more? 80%. What about home games when he played 20 minutes or more with no Porzingis? 92% of games, 12 of his 13. So I like Chris, uh, like Peyton Pritchard in the absence of Chris Stops to go out there and hit two threes here. Back a point guard. We already saw that Drew Holiday is on the injury report. Uh, I don't mind this spot in terms of how he's done against the Knicks. The, the good thing is that last time they played, he hit the over, but prior to that, uh, he did not. But again, we're looking at that 20 or more minutes. The only time that he's ever hit the over here, or the only time he's played 20 minutes, he did in fact hit the over. So that is worth noting, right? And guys, by the way, what you're looking at here is a tool called Outlier. If you have not checked out Outlier, it is my favorite sports betting player prop research tool on the market. Go ahead and check it out. That link is in the pinned comment. You're going to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days free. That is a week free of Outlier to try it out. If you don't like it, don't worry about it, right? It's a free trial, but I know you'll like it. And even if, even if you do, you're like, oh my God, that's going to cost a bunch. No, it's uh, yeah, $19.99 if you pay monthly per month after the trial, which is a super manageable price for all of the tools you're getting and seeing here. So go ahead and check out Outlier. That link is in the pinned comment. Make sure to check it out. Seven days free. Next up is another plus money play that I'm liking, plus 106 on the over 22 and a half points, rebounds, and assists for Josh Hart. Yes, there's a lot of new blood in this Knicks team, but I do think that he's still going to be able to do those sort of, uh, you know, uh, I guess ancillary type stats, rebounding, more assists with better players to pass to, right? And you look at his ramp up of the season. Now, he's still in the starting lineup. I still expect him to play plenty of minutes, and he definitely started to crush towards the end of year. Last year, uh, 10 games for him. He averaged 29 rebounds plus, uh, excuse me, points, rebounds plus assists. Against the Celtics, he cashed in three of his last four. And when he played a bunch of minutes, so if we're looking at minutes again, I think he's going to play, I would say, and I would hope, 30 minutes. So if we look at last year when he played at least 30 minutes, which again, he kind of carved out that role. New York loves him. He loves New York. In terms of playing that many, he had hit in 75% of games last year against the Celtics, all three in which he played that many minutes, right? So I do like this spot for him here to be able to go out 
out there and do a bunch of things. Again, this is plus money. Uh, I think that Josh Hart, maybe he goes out there and scores on the benefit of that. There's a bunch of other guys at the other team the Celtics are trying to cover, but I think that he's going to have plenty of assists uh, in this spot as well. In terms of assists last year, uh, or I guess overall last year, right? We look at this. He averaged 7.2 potential assists in the last 10 games, though, 8.2 potential assists. So if he gets you five assists, now we're only talking, uh, you know, getting that down to 17 or so. You know he's probably going to be good for eight-ish rebounds. Now we're just looking for him to score nine points. It's pretty easy to kind of go through piece by piece and say, hey, I think he's going to do this even with his floor. Now, what if he goes out there and has a good scoring night? It's going to look even better, right? A good rebound night, look even better. A good assist night, going to look even better. So I think his floor, to be honest, is right around. 20 points, rebounds, and assists. So if he can't get one bucket, one assist, that type of thing to push us over, uh, push us over then I guess it was just a bad call. But Josh Hart, over 22 and a half PRA there is going to be our third player prop. And guys, it's going to wrap it up for the video. Hope you guys did enjoy. As always, keep an eye on the pinned comment. We might throw in some additions. There's tons of injuries and whatnot that we do have to monitor. So we might even throw an, addition, an additional play in the pinned comment that we didn't talk about here. Like I said, we're recording this the night before. We're going to continue to look into this game and then obviously before game time tomorrow we'll have plenty of plays in the pinned comment but we're still going to start the season conservative you know what I mean maybe a few of them you know half unit plays that type of thing but man oh man am I excited for the NBA to be back hopefully you guys are too one last reminder to hit that like button and subscribe if you are new let's go ahead and uh, keep the momentum going what we had last year in the NBA let's see if we can even pull a little bit of that and get some traction in the beginning of this season but I'll catch you guys in the next one all right peace out